So my mentor, Chiharu Sugai, he's the uh, one of the founders at Corin. Sure. Fortunately, he passed away last year, yeah. but um, he started this uh, business with Sari Kawano, the owner. And uh, you know, when they started carrying knives in, in the states, there was a lot of issues where people would uh, complain that Japanese knives are too delicate, and you know, they they chip and they're they're too fragile. So he started the service, but soon thereafter realized that well, the service is not just enough, right? You got to educate people on why these knives are chipping. Well, Japanese knives are more for precision, more delicate. Um, so he started to do these uh, educational tours where he would go to restaurants and hotels and, and really teach that. So one day, he, I guess, didn't feel like going. So he's like, Vincent, you're on. And I was just like, wait, what? And I'm not ready for this. I don't know. He's like, yeah, you'll be fine. Just go and do it. So that was the first time. And how long had you been working with him prior Oh, this was about point? maybe like two years in. Okay. Yeah, so I've been sharpening. At that point, I was sharpening for maybe about a year, a little over wow. a year. Wow, and just like teach someone now. And it was just like teach someone. Yeah. So we went out to a restaurant on the Upper West Side, and I was shivering. I was stuttering. It was so scary. But, uh, you know, as I repeated this and do this process, I started to really love it because how much the chefs appreciated it and, uh, you know, how much they were really into into learning. Um, the other aspect of it, which I take pride in now, especially, was um, so I'm I'm half Japanese, half Chinese. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I take pride in my cultures. And when I was little, people would ask me, "Oh, what do you want to do when you grow up?" And I would say, "I don't know, but I can speak Japanese. I can speak English. Um, I want to use that." And uh, my family was in the restaurant industry. They owned several restaurants in the city. Where did you grow up? Here? Yeah, in Manhattan. Love it. So, you know, food and restaurants have been very dear to my heart. Mm. So when I started doing this, I was like, wait, I'm using Japanese to learn myself uh, in terms of sharpening. I go to, I learn from my teacher. I learn from craftsmen in Japan in Japanese. Then I'm using my English. I'm translating that and sharing it with, you know, chefs in this country, right? Interesting. And food, I love food. Yep. Um, restaurant industry, I love. So like everything kind of fell into place for me. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, this is what I enjoy doing. This is what I do. And this is awesome. Sure. Yeah. That's incredible because to hear for someone to probably hear that you were nervous at one point to give that education. And now you're on Buzzfeed and making videos with Corin and all that stuff. What, what have there been any resources that have helped you or do you find that it's just repetition, repetition? It's uh, put the reps in. I think it's a lot of it is repetition, but yeah. also being confident in my work and your so, knowledge base, right? Yeah. So the more I uh, sharpened, mm. the more I got better at sharpening, the more confident I felt, and then I was able to translate that into these, uh, you know, demonstrations and, and videos. You know, so at first when I was nervous, I found that it was because I wasn't confident in my skills. Yeah. As I got better I felt more confident and then the other thing is the feedback I get I mean all these you know chefs and cooks and students they're amazing they're amazing people like yourself mm. you know you give me this positive feedback and I feel like oh wow you know what I do is worth it what I do it makes can make a difference for others so I really want to you know better myself so that everyone else can you know learn from that too it's not just speaking from me when I say that you what you put out is very very helpful. So don't don't stop that. I don't know if there's. I mean, I know you guys have this all built out now, and it's amazing that you guys can shoot like you have a space to shoot now. Yeah. Let's get into what are some common misconceptions that you see because there's a lot of bad knowledge floating around out there. So when you see someone ask questions, where you're like, where did you get that from? Because <laughs> a lot of times, I mean, that can be frustrating when people are getting this knowledge that's ultimately hurting this product that they spent a lot of money on. And so I, I can only imagine that you, part of your yeah. crusade is to kind of remedy that. Uh, I would say one of the biggest things is, um, so we talk about ratio a lot. Yes. So some knives are symmetrically sharpened. Some knives are asymmetrically sharpened. And the ratio we indicate saying 50-50, 70-30, 80-20, 90-10. Sometimes people mistake that for the angle. So they'll be sharpening at a 70 degree angle on one side and a 30 degree angle on the other side. And that's very steep. That's going to ruin, ruin your knife. <laughs> and uh, I've seen that many times. Yep. Um, so that's one of those. Okay. You got to ratio and angle are very different. Right. So that's a big one. Yep. Yeah. Um, what about um, people that think that Japanese knives are always better? 
Um, you know, I think that every knife has its purpose, right? Sure. There are German knives that are very great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they're good for more, I would say, robust tasks. Japanese knives can be a little bit delicate if you're working with bigger cuts or, you know, you're doing rougher things. Yeah. So German knives have their place. Japanese knives have their place. Mm. And uh, it's really a matter of finding a knife that suits your needs, in my opinion. Chef asks, what makes Japanese knives so expensive? Which isn't always the case, right? You guys have a lot of knives that are sub a hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's a misconception, I would say. There sure. are a lot of knives that are very, very expensive, mm. but that doesn't mean all of them are. We have knives sub one hundred, definitely. But generally, what makes knives more expensive? Japanese knives, they're produced on a much smaller scale. The sure. ones that we work with. Um, mm. The I've visited some of the factories. I would say the average is about ten employees in the factory producing all these knives. Wow. And when we talk to them, we say, oh, you know, do you want to expand ever? Do you have any plans to increase production? And most of them, if not all of them, say no, because they want to maintain the quality. Um, so, yeah, that's why they can only produce so much, which causes it to obviously cost a little bit more. Other thing is the amount of care that goes into each knife. I uh, got the opportunity to visit Misono. Yes. And Where is that located? That's in Seki, Japan. Got it. Got it. And what I saw there made me Wait, go, so you're only charging this much? Uh -huh. Because the amount of care, they go, when they, so these Misona knives are stamped out. They stamp it out. They inspect every knife. Then they start to polish. Then they inspect again. Make sure everything's straight. Everything's, there's no imperfections. Then they um, temper it. Then they inspect it again. So literally every step of the way, they're checking for any imperfections, any, any flaw. And if there is any flaw, it's all, it's kicked off the line, and that that not only uh, decreases your margin because it's you know waste, but it's also a lot of man hours. It is inspecting, right? Um, so what I and a lot of times people actually don't realize this is knives have to be rested, interesting, kind of like a wine. Sure. So once the temp uh, the metal is tempered and everything, they have to rest it because it needs to settle down. It's kind of like a wine; it needs to be aged. So. A knife actually, yeah, it starts to, if left alone, if you try to, you know, create a knife right away, it's going to warp very easily because the edge will curve and the edge will curve yeah. and the humidity, the temperature is wow. all affected. So mm. you need to let it rest. Mm -hmm. So a knife from start to finish may take months. Sure. And, you know, again, after seeing all that, you, I learned a new respect for these knives and yeah. really understood like, okay, it makes sense that it costs under $50 in some cases more, but right. I'm like... That's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah.